This is lecture 15. So not a lot to say in this, um, but uh, what little we have is fairly important. And I think that the biggest thing here is the example problem. So it's a very detailed example problem, a lot to it, but I will say it doesn't get harder than that. So risk five, Otter MCU wrapper, let's get into it. So one of the things I need to say, and uh, you have to realize this is, so much of what we're doing here is kind of like out of context. The notion is we are working with a microcontroller. So risk five is technically a microcontroller. And so microcontrollers are uh, used to control things. And essentially it's a computer that controls other things. Now, the issue is those other things are external devices, which means like maybe it reads sensor inputs and uh, drive some type of control outputs. So the issue is in this class, you have to ask yourself, what are we controlling? And the answer is um, pretty much nothing. And so uh, it's it's kind of lacks context. I know it's a problem with the class or the course in general. And generally speaking, towards the end of the class is when we start interfacing with external things that are somewhat cool. But the problem is um, we're going to run a week short in this class and we won't really get there. So re reality is that we are programming a computer, which is we're going to call it a microcontroller. It's going to control stuff and it's going to solve our problems for us via software, or I guess we're going to call it firmware. So these are, we're solving problems via firmware. Okay. So the, um, the, the, the issue is with the microcontroller is you, you got to talk to it. And so essentially this microcontroller needs to interface with the outside world. So this, this is a microcontroller here. This is our microcontroller, as you know and love it. And the issue in this thing is that pretty much every, ins every, every uh, input and output there has to do with generally speaking, input and output. So essentially, except for the clock and maybe the reset, every other input and output on this device has to do with I.O. Okay, so anyway, so it's, it's, the thing is designed to control other circuits, which means you get some uh, status on the input and then you write something on the output to control it. And we've seen this in, in programming. We've you know, controlled some LEDs and stuff like that. Nothing really impressive, but the, the issue is generally speaking, the input is reading status of stuff. The output is writing, uh, is, is controlling things. So we're, we're outputting control signals, we're reading status signals. Now, if you think about it, or maybe, maybe you don't realize it, but here it is. This, this is a microcontroller. It's used to control things. It's very uh, very lacking in the way of mathematical operations. Typically, what you know when you're controlling something, oftentimes you can control it without using heavy-duty math. Now, the the catch on this is that if you need math, you can you can do it. Now, there's libraries that allow you to do you know stuff like division and stuff like that. I mean, you can there's a C compiler for this microcontroller. We're using assembly language, but in the C compiler. No, no big deal. Make drop in a uh, division, and there's not a division instruction. It will take quite a, a extra long time to do division and the instructions that are available in the RISC five, but it it can be done. And so anyway, low level. That's where we're at. This thing, this processor is designed for generosity. Uh, it's very generic, and the idea is there's just absolutely a ton of I/O on this thing, and we. We will get into that uh, quite in depth later. Uh, we'll do some example problems. Actually, as I'm thinking about it, that would be a great example problem for this lecture. So I'll add that in later at the end, and um, that's it. So this is our this is our marker controller here, and we as we need to talk to it via the the equipment we have, which is the basis board, and so. Essentially, we're going to call this this file, this model, a wrapper, which is essentially a Verilog file that's used to interface this thing with the, which is the RISC-V microcontroller. It's used to interface that with 
the the input and output devices on the basis three board okay so think about it the input on the basis three board is switches and buttons the output are leds and cathodes and anodes the cathodes and, and anodes have to do with the seven segment display now the issue is is that these these inputs stuff that's coming in it comes into the microcontroller and goes into a register I.O. goes into a register. That means it's kind of, no matter when we grab it from the outside world, it is saved. It goes into a register, which is, you know, a form of storage. The issue is on the output, which you'll see coming up here, the output's only available for essentially a one clock cycle, which is, you know, pretty short when this thing's running at 100, 100 megahertz. It's available for one clock cycle, so we have to adjust accordingly. And the idea here is when we write a value to the LED, we want that LED to be that LED value to be persistent. Meaning if we turn it on, we want to leave it on. If we turn it off, we want to leave it off. Now the current without external hardware, uh, the, the writes to external devices is only there for a clock cycle it's not going to work so what we do is we put those output devices in registers so when we all the output signals here are registered so when we write a signal to the leds what we're really doing is writing to a register the output of that register is connected to the leds so that means you know register storage so that means whatever we write there stays there and that's um, very important that, that goes for all the inputs and so the issue is without with an output operation what we're doing is taking something in a register and sending it to the outside world and then uh, on the output we're going to actually you know design some hardware that stores it and this yeah it's going to store it in registers as you can see here now so the issue here is that um, it's you know we got a bunch of input devices here we only have two okay but you know depending how many buttons you have on this thing uh, we we have could have a whole bunch of different input devices here what's going to just what's going to control this mux is uh, is the iobus address okay so it's nothing different than a mux and you already know it and love it it's just essentially this iobus address is going to decide which one of these output signals gets fed into the actual microcontroller itself. So once again, it's a MUX controlled by the IO bus address. So it turns out the IO bus address also controls uh, which, we'll say, which register gets written to. So it's actually one of two controls. So this is going to be uh, an address value. Um, I, it's not really a, a multiplexer as the input was. It's actually some type of decoder on this thing and since the you're going to send it at, you're doing an output operation you're going to give it an address and uh, this external hardware is going to decode that address and latch the value into particular register according to the address you specified so all the different output devices and input devices have their own unique address and you're going to see that coming up now the last thing here is output is very special. Um, I have this signal right here, which is a single signal. It's indicating that uh, the microcontroller is doing output. The outside world uses it to latch data. And so the latching of data into these registers is a two-step process. You need to choose a register or decode which register you're going to write to and then uh, send it a write signal and like I said you're going to see that in the code that comes up. Yes so you know we got we got the the input data is coming into the memory and you, what we're going to see is it's going to come around here to the register. It's going to be passed directly through. So that's the input the output is essentially the output of a register. It's coming out of a register going to the outside world. And when I do an output operation, it's also going to assert a signal. It's going to send it a, a pulse on the output. And you'll, you'll see that coming up in a second also. So there are key signals here are this single signal, um, this 
this data signal for output, this data signal for input, and and remember, if you recall, all input and output is done with load and store operations, uh, load and store instructions, which are a result of you know, formulating an effective address from a base address and a, an offset, which uses the ALU. So it makes sense that the, uh, the, out, the address used is the output of the ALU. Now, typically when we're doing output, that's of course that's the address if we're doing you know like a memory operation this is going to be used as an as an address into memory and okay yeah so this serves the same purpose serves two purposes really same address is going to be if you can you can see this t coming around here as an address into memory or it's used as a uh, we'll say a port address to external devices so the uh, this is the wrapper file. This is some of the highlights in the wrapper file. Um, this is, this happens to be a an input operation, and then what I'm doing is inputting the switches here. So I know it's an input operation because I uh, this this address here, which is going to be the effective address here, zero plus x ten is greater than zero 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 f f f f. So that makes it an input. Now. The issue here is uh, these input devices both have addresses associated with them. They're unique addresses. I um, certainly uh, have the ability to input 32 bits. I could have put all. I could have mapped all these 30, all these switches and and buttons to the same port, but that makes no sense. Uh, what I do is I've arbitrarily assigned different port address for each of those devices. So each unique external device has uh, a unique address that's that's the way it works so if i need to put to grab a certain input this is what controls the mux these are these addresses here are what controls that input mux same is true with the output each output device has a an, an assigned address nothing special about these these are all arbitrary don't get um don't don't get too excited about them. Someone just pulled those off the top of their head. Uh, and the issue is, is you did just have to go with it. Now the issue is, if anytime you're working with new hardware, someone has to tell you what these are. If, I mean, if you didn't set up the hardware, someone has to tell you what the, the addresses are of the specific devices that your microcontroller is interfacing with. Someone set the hardware up. It's memory map they have to tell you these addresses you wouldn't know them otherwise so these uh, this local param is is like a, a constant in the uh, in the Verilog model you know don't use that too often but when you use it it's actually very helpful and so okay, take a look at that it's really it's really interesting stuff but it gets better um, so I want to remind people before we get into this I think the first thing we're going to do is input here and so if you take a look at this, what we're going to do is get an input signal coming in here. And because it's input, we're going to pass it right out that right out that signal right there. OK, so if this is an input, that means it's greater than zero. Uh, that signal passes right from the input right here up to the output. So that's really important to know. It's kind of kind of a slick way of doing it. But, you know, that's what we got. Okay, and then we'll see the slide again for the output. Okay, so here is, uh, if you remember correctly, and I should have dropped the picture of it here, is that the the input has a mux sitting there. And I think it's worth going back and looking at this. So this mux right here is what we're looking at. And so this piece of code right here models that mux. Okay, so the IO, the IO bus address is the selector signal on that mux and what it's saying if the io bus address is equal to one of these values uh, uh, then one of these values is assigned to one of these values is assigned to the input okay so once again this is the address and in, if one of these addresses is true whatever it assigns the data to one of these switches so let's look at that I should have dropped that in there. So once again, if if uh, if the the ad the selector signal is the address, 
if it selects one of these things, it's assigned to be uh, put into the device. I think that's really kind of messy. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so the IO the IO bus is the address. It selects one of these values, one of these values to be put actually into the device. It's a select signal. It selects one of these values to appear right there. Okay, and we can go back on this thing. Uh, so essentially these are like six, these are not 32-bit signals. It's uh, uh, what we've done here is, is made sure that uh, the non-essential bits are actually zero. Not a big, not a big deal on it, but actually helps a little bit. So this is a MUX. That's all this is. It's a combinatorial circuit. MUX. That's nothing fancy about it. This is the selector signal. If the selector equals this, then the uh, these external inputs get assigned to the this input right here. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure what else to say about this thing. Essentially, once again, the the big thing here is this this right this signal right here becomes the the select signal on the on a MUX, which decides which of these inputs is actually assigned to to that input on the microcontroller. That's input, that's all there is to it. So let's take a look at output. Okay, so the output here is, the important thing is, uh, it's coming out of a register and sent to the outside world. But the important thing is, uh, there is, uh, you know, this is memory mapped IO, so a store operation here is what I'm gonna use to output data. And the idea here is when I'm doing a when I'm doing a a, uh, a memory, not a memory access, when I'm doing an output, it actually takes that write signal and sends it to the outside world. Okay, so if I'm not doing an output signal, what I do is I send zero to the outside world. So what this has the effect of doing is that when I'm doing output, it sends out a pulse on this signal right here, which I O write signal. And um, what it's you know the external hardware is going to use that signal to uh, help it latch the output data into those output registers. Okay, so this is this is the this is essentially if you stare at it long enough, it's it's essentially a combination of registers and decoder. So what it's saying is uh, it's you know the way it's set up. It's actually system Verilog. It's registered. Because I use the pause edge there, it is register. And when that out, when that IO bus write signal, which is this thing right here, is turned on, which it will turn on when I'm doing output, it um, comes down and evaluates these, uh, you know, this case statement down here. So this case statement is once once again it, it, it does the, it handles the fact. Essentially, it's a decoder. If that's what that's what it is. So essentially. When, when the IO bus address matches one of these input addresses, it takes that IO bus data and assigns it to the appropriate uh, input. Now I put these inputs here as R underscore in front of it to indicate these are registers of some type. Uh, this code is set up to set in such a way that that these values right here are registers. Okay, it's um, yes. I, I don't know what else to tell you about that. This is this is how you induce a register with a uh, case statement. So, and it you know once again it's the fact that it it's using this pause edge here. It's gonna it's gonna make a register out of whatever you assign something to. And what we're doing is assigning the this this signal right here to something else, which is these signals, and these turn out to be the registers. Okay, so the, remember, the microcontroller, when I do output operation, here's the here's the, the kind of the, the address that's sent out to specify which device it is. We have an IO bus write signal, which is essentially this a pulse to indicate I'm doing an output, and once I do that, it latches data into one of these registers. Uh, and lastly, and you know, this is uh, one of the last things you have to do in this thing is take these register values, 
and assign it to the output. Now the out, output in this case is, these, these are actually, I, I should have put it there, but these are actually uh, the, uh, devices on the board. It's something that the board is expecting. So you, you, what, what you're doing here is you're driving signals to the output devices, which is the LED and segments and the anodes. Those are your three output devices. So yes, it's actually really kind of cool. I, I suggest you look at this thing and, and kind of spend time to understand it. You won't regret it. And I think that's all we have. That's all we have.